Gavin, coming back to you, um, you were just the little kid at the back of the class doodling away uh, and uh, take us back to those times as a kid where those seeds of your creativity were being sowed. Uh, yeah, so that's right. I was kind of um, that kid in class who always was doodling instead of uh, listening to the teacher. And um, yeah, my files and books would just be littered with, with doodles and eventually, you know, other, other students would ask me to, to draw in their files and stuff like that. Um, yeah, just, I've always had that, that passion for drawing, I guess. And, you know, kind of crossed over with my passion for, you know, cartoons when I was a kid, for comic books. And, yeah, I've just always loved to doodle. And it's just kind of thankfully been able to slowly but surely, you know, keep going throughout my life where I'm able to, to do it for a living now. I just wonder, were you like, were you like a natural sort of out the blocks, you know, and just really good at drawing? Or is it something that you learned? <laughs> uh, it's a good question, you know. Can you really learn to, to draw? But, you, you know, as, long, as far as back as I can remember, I've always just yeah, been doodling or drawing, you know. So I'm sure that I, I sucked when I was a kid, or I, I'm very sure that I sucked when I was a kid. And just, <laughs> you know, it's just like anything, you know, you know, the more you do it, the more repetition you know, slowly you get better and better. And, you know, yeah, I can see, I've seen some of my old drawings when I was a kid and, you know, I thought they were cool when I did them, but when you look at them now, they're just like, <laughs> like horrible. So yeah, there's been, you know, definitely a gradual learning curve. Um, there might be some innate talent, but it's definitely only part of the, um, the mix. I think it's definitely mostly practice. Yeah. Of course. It's like, it's like with anything, isn't it? You just, yeah, it's just, you know, I just always, I always, lent towards drawing more than sports or writing or music. Um, I've got a musical family and I never, you know, picked up the guitar or anything. It's always just been drawing. So <laughs> that's cool. Guess there's always going to be challenges, whether it's a nasty boss or yeah, exactly. laws, you know, <laughs> one way or another, you're going to have to work around stuff. So, yeah. um, you know, you spoke about uh, Zen pencils briefly a moment ago that you, you know, you're, putting in really good quotes from, from inspiring people um, together. Maybe you could just expand, expand on that. I know you also do other stuff you, which involves a lot of storytelling. Um, what is the storytelling process and, and can you sort of grow that and improve on that over time? And, and have you found that you've been getting better at it? Yeah, um, cool. That's a good one. Um, yeah, so I've kind of found that, yeah, over the, over the years since I started the website, um, a lot of the early posts were just kind of posters like one single image, uh, one nice looking image. And over the years, I've kind of found that I prefer telling stories through the comics. Um, so I think it's something I've gotten better at, definitely. Um, so yeah, once I kind of find a quote that I'm going to work on, I just kind of, um, just kind of have it sitting on my desk. Um, I just kind of keep reading it and, you know, I'm kind of working on, you know, the previous comic, while I've got that on the desk, the, the one I'm going to work on next, so just to have it um, in my head. And, you know, sometimes I know what the idea is straight away. Sometimes I don't. If I don't, then, you know, I find going for a walk. I have, I've got two dogs, so I take them for walks every day. I find that's a great time to, to get um, the imagination um, running. Um, and, yeah, just kind of sometimes it's just as boring as just, sitting with a, a notepad and <laughs> looking at it, um, hoping that an idea will come. Um, but um, again, I find the more that you do that process, the more easier it becomes. Like the idea will come. You don't have to get too um, anxious that there's no idea that eventually an idea will come. And that's when I just start to flesh it out. I just start to do a lot of sketches. Um, I might just focus on one scene first and get that done. And then I build in the rest of the story to fit that scene. Sometimes I come up with an ending first and work backwards. Um, so yeah, there's all these little tricks, I guess, that you can use. And yeah, I think it's definitely something that you can um, get better at. Mm. And yeah, that's kind of the hard part, just writing the story, thinking of that idea. And once that story is done, the actual making of the comic isn't like, super hard. It's just kind of more of a craft. It's just building, you know, drawing and inking and coloring. That's just kind of more of an, um, like an automatic 
craft, I guess. It's the, the initial writing and idea stage, which is definitely the hardest. Hmm. I, I see like comics as, a, I guess, a form of art and, and a great way to express yourself. They're definitely not just for kids, that's for sure. Um, right. Can you maybe tell us why you think they're a great medium for, you know, trying to get a message across or yeah. provoking some sort of thoughts? Yeah, um, definitely. I definitely agree with that, that they are a great medium, one that's maybe not, um, you know, utilized as much as it could be. But, you know, obviously, you know, they say a picture tells a thousand words. So it's a visual um, media. Um, so the visual, I think, is more important than the, the words. I get one, well, I, mean, I shouldn't say that. They will, both are equally important. And, you know, you know, if you just have a prose novel, it's one thing. If you just have, you know, pictures, it's another thing. But it's just a weird kind of alchemy of putting those two together. You have pictures and words working um, and, you know, together to tell a story. I think it's just um, really powerful. And also, it's good because, you know, instead of like saying if you had to, if you're a filmmaker, where you would need, you know, a whole team of people to be working on this film, um, a whole army of visual effects people, whatever. Um, with a comic, you can just have one person and he can kind of get across that same message as a film, although it's kind of you know, a different medium. But, you know, I could just be one person and, and put together this elaborate sci-fi fantasy or, you know, drama or comedy. And I can kind of tell that visually and with the, the writing. Um, so, yeah, I think that helps. And another thing is that if you can't even, a lot of uh, people use Zen pencils to learn another language, like uh, non-English speakers use it to learn English because, you know, you can kind of tell what's happening with just the pictures. You don't really, and you can kind of put the words, you know, you can kind of guess what the words are going to be if you kind of have a half understanding of English. So yeah, it's just a, a visual language that is powerful, I guess. But yeah. um, talking about, you know, when you, you know, reading cartoons as a youngster, you obviously for a long time actually wanted to be a cartoonist and uh, how did your parents sort of take to that? Uh, not great. <laughs> um, so, you know, I haven't, you know, uh, Asian parents and they kind of steer kids towards the more, um, you know, reputable careers like a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, something along, along those lines. And, um, you know, like any, Asian uh, parents, they want you to be a doctor. That's the dream. That's number one. <laughs> um, number two is probably a lawyer. Um, and But since I showed some kind of artistic talent, uh, they kind of wanted me to be an architect. Because, you know, they figure, you know, you know you're drawing, you know, why don't you like being an architect? <laughs> Isn't that just drawing? And, I, you know, I was not interested in that because I don't really like maths. So, um, you know, they weren't that encouraging about it uh, mm. to be honest and you know they were never really believed that it could be a, a career I never really believed it could be a viable career to be honest especially you know living in Perth Australia you know there's not really much of a a cartooning industry here <laughs> you know all the all the my heroes were either from America or the UK um so yeah it was definitely unrealistic uh, growing up um but you know after high school I kind of I knew that, you know, I wanted to do something maybe creative. So I kind of went, I studied graphic design um, at uni. And uh, that was, you know, it was okay. I, I didn't love it, but it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, kind of, so yeah, my parents, you know, they were just, they wanted me just to be, get a job basically, a good mm -hmm. job and not have to worry about me, which is fine. I understand that now being a, a dad myself. so. <laughs> Um, you know, it, it was normal. It's fine that they, you know, they didn't encourage me, but they just wanted the best for my future. Yeah. Um, so I kind of listened. I was a kind of a good son. I did what I was told. I went to university. I got a decent job. And Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy cape fold, 